faith has finally burned out. The world is rid of his existence at last. Was he still alive? You could say that. But you could also say he'd been dead for decades. What's that supposed to mean? Biologically speaking, it's hard to say how much was his life. Side effects from the treatment? No. The primary effect. Keeping a dying host alive as long as possible. That is the whole point. But in the end, he grew too dependent on his children. Hmm. As if he had any other way to keep on living. He first underwent parasite therapy before the Soviet Union became his home. His body was horribly burned. Fire washed across his thin, young frame and stole his skin and his throat, even his lungs. Only through repeated therapies could the parasites keep him alive. Most of his life became something the parasites gave to him. And then he lost the ability to die. That is correct. The parasites live on past the host's death, still aiding cell composition. At that stage, there's no way to extract them from the host cells. There is no way of knowing when the last cell of Skullface's body would die. The only choice was to burn the whole thing. And his children, along with it. <laughs> and I am one to talk. When my life is snuffed out, I expect you to treat my body the same way. And when I burn, I will truly be one with my children for the first time. You say there were three English vocal parasites. According to Skullface, yeah. Skullface had two of the English strain with him. You burned both of them. There was an oil fire. I tossed him in. So that just leaves one. And you tell me Skullface said he used it. He said it was very close to me. Very close. One of your comrades. Or someone ordered to kill you. Or he could have been speaking metaphorically. Hmm. Metaphorically? Close to your spirit. Close to your heart. Someone who either loves you or despises you. The second one makes a long list. Whichever it is, act with caution. Skullface implanted someone with the English language strain. Who it is is irrelevant. Why? I tell you what Skullface really meant. Very close to you means you will be exposed. Hmm. All the infected here have been given the Wolbachia. Even if the vocal cord parasites infect them now, they cannot reproduce. But if there's a different host among us, host to the English strain... If that were the case, we'd see the symptoms. What about the non-English speakers? We have plenty of those, but the staff use English as a common language. But if that someone has not spoken English yet, and begins to speak it now. There'd be another outbreak. The final mating pair of the English strain must be found immediately. Skullface is gone, but his threat still remains on this base. Do you see what the final mating pair is? With him dead, those parasites are the stain he wished to leave upon the world. His thirst for vengeance in the flesh. Think. Does anyone here bear a grudge against you? Who would target you specifically? The ethnic cleansers that Co Talker mentioned, they were in Skullface's true goal. All we have is circumstantial evidence, but here's my theory. It was Cypher who started developing the vocal cord parasites as bioweapons, parasitic weapons, and Africa was the testing ground for them. As Code Talker said, their purpose is the ethnic cleansing of only those who speak a particular language. So they could do a weapon of mass destruction to eradicate specific groups 
races, ethnicities, or colonies by the language they speak. Or a kind of absolute language control. Or maybe a tool for those arrogant fools to build some misguided utopia. I can see plenty of uses for them. However, in practical terms, they wouldn't be as dangerous as you'd think. Counteracting the parasites is easy, after all. Cut them out of your throat to save your life, or just don't talk. That also prevents the infection from spreading. So if the international community were to find out about them, they'd no longer be the threat they were conceived to be. In which case, their targets would be limited to minority groups as a deterrent or a terrorist tool. It's hard to imagine Cypher developing something like that as a main weapon for their arsenal. That leads me to think we've only tugged on one little thread in Cypher's grand tapestry. An obscure corner of their work, possibly forgotten altogether. In any case, things changed. When Skullface was forced to relocate to Africa and he saw that thread dangling. All the time he continued that research, he was secretly following his own agenda. The ethnic liberator parasites. His English language strain. Skullface said there were only three samples of the English language strain parasite, and I think we can believe him. Bringing his ethnic liberator's plan to fruition depended on creating an English version of the vocal cord parasites at all costs. But an English strain would have been useless to Cypher. Worse, it could have destroyed everything they'd built. It was the one type they couldn't allow. That means Skullface was forced to develop his English strain out of sight of Cypher's network. Naturally, he couldn't use the greenhouse facility Cypher had set up and filled with guinea pigs. Skullface must have found some secret place to create his precious few English parasites, hiding all evidence like a man cheating on his wife. Somewhere, an entirely standalone environment. And when his plan entered its final phase, he must have made the place disappear. Some little room could be anywhere, but now nowhere at all. We'll never know where he did it, but to elude Cypher's surveillance, it couldn't have been big. I believe Skullface was telling the truth. There were only ever three samples of the English language strain. Why activate Sahelanthropus in Afghanistan? This is how Skullface wanted things to play out. The Soviet Union secretly develops a new type of nuclear weapon and successfully deploys it in Afghanistan. Revealing the existence of Sahelanthropus results in a return to the glory days of the Cold War. The threat it poses reignites the nuclear arms race between the world's major powers. The demand for nuclear weapons increases around the globe. What if you then introduced a nuclear weapon anyone could get their hands on? Non-nuclear nations, militant groups of all shapes and sizes, they'd all jump at the chance. Sohalanthropus was a marketing tool to sell nukes all around the world. But I think it's safe to say that plan was stamped out before it got up and running. The world's intelligence agencies never did turn up anything conclusive on it. After all, Sohalanthropus vanished before word could spread. Everything that's happened is already a fading memory, never to join the pages of history. Except for Cypher. Cypher won't forget. They'll already be working on something, quietly, beneath the surface. They'll use the pieces of data scraped together from this incident to build their own bipedal weapon. It'll take them a long time to complete it, but for now, the Greed Sector have found their new life's work. We'll have to be ready, too. <laughs>